What's shaking, my friends? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Shay, and today we are going to talk about all the books that I read in the month of May. Now, I vlogged most of these books, so I will send you there to find more in-depth thoughts about these books. There were only two that I did not vlog, and I will talk about those more in-depth here. If you don't know how I normally do my wrap-ups, I rank the books I read from my lowest rated to my highest rated, so that's what we're going to do today. First, I read 11 books in the month of May for a total of 4,797 pages. I will be ranking and talking about 12 books because I did not include my last book of April in my April wrap-up, so I will also include that book here. I also did DNF two books, which we will briefly talk about. We will start with the DNFs. I DNFed Hell Divers. I'll pop the cover here. This is a post-apocalyptic story where we are following the last known people to inhabit Earth and they are now circling the Earth in these spaceships. The problem is the spaceships are falling apart. The way of life is falling apart and so they have to have these Hell Divers who risk their lives and jump out of the plane to Earth to kind of get things that they need to keep their ships running and everything else. And one day they dive down and find that Earth may be inhabited by something else. Who knows? Uh, but the reason why this didn't work for me is just because I think this type of post-apocalyptic novel horror story is just not kind of my jam. This is also a very, very long series and so I could not see myself continuing on with this series. The second book that I DNF was A Letter to the Luminous Deep by Sylvie Catherall. Now this book I read over 50% of, I believe, um, and I was enjoying my time, but there wasn't any point in time where I could sit down the novel and not feel like I wanted to know what would happen next. I was just fine putting the novel down. But this is a completely told in epistolary format and it follows different timelines. Uh, we have a world where a lot of people live under the water. They are studying sea creatures. One of our main female characters kind of thinks she has discovered a new species so she reaches out in letter format to this man who works at the university and he is very scholarly and he knows about things and they start to form a correspondence and eventually a romance and so he comes and visits her in her underwater home and a quake happens and they are missing presumed dead then we have our second timeline which is about a year from when they went missing where their siblings are now communicating back and forth trying to tell their story trying to figure out what happened and kind of coming together in their own grief, which I did like portions of the story, but again, it just didn't draw me in. The epistolary format just kind of didn't help, didn't let me get to know the characters as much as I wanted to, so unfortunately that was a DNF for me. Editing Shay here to say that I forgot a DNF, and that's going to be Escape Velocity by Victor Minobo, and this is a story that is a kind of a sci-fi murder mystery where they're on this luxury liner in space, and at this boarding school reunion, it's like their 25th reunion, and we know that somebody died back when they were in boarding school, and maybe some things happened, maybe they figure out, you know, like how a lot of murder mysteries uh, find out, but we do find out that there are going to be some people murdering, trying to murder people in at this reunion as well, and there's some politics at play. My problem with this was I read about 50 pages, and it's just was very prestigious. It was very like reading about rich people drama, and that just wasn't wasn't for me. But if you like drama, this could be for you. Drama and mystery and some sci-fi elements. But back to our regularly scheduled programming. Now we will start with my number 12 and that's going to be The Rosie Project, which this is a very beloved book out in the romantic sphere. I think this was published in the 2013. I cannot remember when exactly this book was published, but it's very, very popular. This is following our main character, Dawn, who is on the spectrum, but is also very smart, a geneticist. And he is very socially awkward. And one day, one of his elderly friends that he has, one of the only friends that he has, tells him that she thinks he would make a good husband. And so that gets in his head and he starts to survey different women to take out on dates to 
to try to find the perfect wife. So that's the husband project. And in comes Rosie. She doesn't fit any of his criteria, but she wants help from him because she is trying to figure out who her real father is. And since he is a geneticist, she is going to try to get his help. And of course it goes from there. My problem with this book and now uh, past me uh, gave it three stars but present me is going to give it two stars. The problem with this book is I just didn't like the way that his character was portrayed. I didn't really jive with the romance at all and I think that you know he would introduce people to the story by talking about everybody's BMI and I, that was a choice and it wasn't necessarily one that I wanted or liked to see. Coming in at number 11 I did not talk about this book. This was a book that I picked up um, trying to get out of my reading slump and I don't know if it worked but this is going to be The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. I gave this book three stars. Full transparency, I should not have read this. I normally don't like friends to lovers stories. This is following two best friends. Our male hero is a very famous football quarterback and our female is a ballerina who's just you know they've been best friends since high school they've held a flame for each other but neither one of them knows that they both like each other and so they end up in this situation where they're having to kind of fake date I just didn't buy the romance I thought that at first like the first 50 percent I was driving with and then once we hit the 50 percent past the 50 percent mark I think it got a little absurd and just like out there and I could have cared less. Coming in at number 10 is The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford. This is the second book in the Windy City series and I liked this one okay. The first book uh, had a hockey romance and the second book is a basketball romance. So our main heroine from the first book, it is her brother in the second book and kind of following it in love with his sister's best friend and while, while I did think this was cute I didn't think that I really cared or jived with the romance as much as I should um, so that's why it landed so low on my list. Coming in at number nine is The Fires of Time by Alexander Wyatt. I did not vlog this one either because the week that I pulled self-pubbed books out of my jar I only pulled one so I, this was the only book that I pulled because of my headspace at the time and I listened to this one on audio. I overall really 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 liked the first third of the book but it kind of fell off from me from there. I just didn't really jive with, with what was going on. I thought it was a little bit meandering but we are following this girl who has basically been kidnapped and taken under the mentor of someone that she doesn't really like and she is trapped in this city and magic is keeping her in but she has magic and she is trying to escape from the city and the mentor that she does not like and I really liked the portion where we were trying to escape from the city. I really liked getting to know the characters. I thought that was great character work. Once we left the city and we started to kind of travel and meander uh, along. I didn't like it as much but I did overall give this book three stars. I do recommend it for people who like political fantasy. I think it did a great job of that but this is also a YA fantasy so as I'm getting out of YA it probably wasn't the smartest thing to read this. I did like it and I do recommend it for people who are looking to get into fantasy. Uh, I think this is a great book for that. Coming in at number eight is The Winds of Strife by Eugene Gutman and this one um, had an interesting magic system and lots of different character uh, POVs. I couldn't really latch on to any one character because I felt there were a lot of different POVs. And so because we were so many, I couldn't grasp on to any of them. And this is following a world where magic exists and women who have magic are outlawed and they are hunted down and they are killed. And one of our main characters, something has happened to him where he is seeking revenge and this is his revenge story and he is going to try to bring down the empire for killing these women. And so we're following him and women that are on the chopping block and all of this and a very, very, um, different kind of magic system that deals with emotions. I overall really liked it but I thought the magic system was a little bit too complex and too many POV characters. Coming in at number seven is One Perfect Couple by Miss Ruth Ware. Me and Miss Ruth Ware don't get along the greatest. I did like this one. I would compare this one to one 
buy one by her, which I didn't really like. I liked it all the way until the end, and then the ending happened, and I didn't like it. So this one is following a couple who basically they kind of want different things out of life the male in this couple uh really wants to be an actor and he kind of bribes and convinces his partner to go on this kind of love island dating show where they go off to this island i can't remember where the island is but basically a storm hits and they are kind of isolated on the island and things start to happen and you know um my problem with this was to me, it wasn't really a mystery thriller. It was just more of like a survival story. And I was hoping for more going into the story. Coming in at number six is the only book that I own physically out of this. And that is going to be The Sunlit Man. This is the book that I read the last week of April, like the last couple of weeks of April that I didn't include in my April wrap up. This is uh, the last of the Sanderson Secret projects um, and I have not read the Stormlight Archive so I think this character may uh, come into play in the Stormlight Archive but this is following our main character who crashes onto this planet as he is trying to get away from other people and on this planet if the sun hits you you die there's a lot of politics and he's trying to figure out which side he should be on and we're learning about this world and running from people and trying to escape and wars and all of that and while I did like this there was nothing unique enough about it to me and nothing that held my attention more than anything else I read so I gave this one three stars. Coming in at number five is the start of my four star reads that is going to be my wife is missing by dj palmer i believe is the author of that story and i just found this lots of twists and turns in the story and this one actually shocked me i thought it was going to go one way and then it went the other this is following a family that is on vacation and the husband goes out to get pizza and then he comes back and his family is missing his children and his wife are missing and it's that kind of story and then as we go along we figure out some things about the wife, the marriage, everything, and overall I really just enjoyed the story. Coming in at number four is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I really was very shocked by the story. We are following Gideon who has been orphaned on this kind of empire and she is wanting to leave. That is her total goal to escape the empire and her arch nemesis Harrow of course fights her and kind of keeps her trapped on the empire. We learn kind of things about the world and what happens is Harrow is going to get Gideon to be her cavalier which is basically her bodyguard for this kind of competition for, for Harrow to get immortality. And I loved it. It was fantasy. It was sci-fi. It was horror. It was a freaking phenomenal blend and I really love this character work and cannot wait to continue on with the series. Coming in at number three is The Spider Key by Jacqueline Hagen. This is the second book in that series. The first book was The Wickwire Watch. I personally loved this one a lot more than The Wickwire Watch. I gave this one four stars. I really liked this one. It started out very high fantasy, very epic fantasy, uh, endeared me to the characters. I can't tell you much about it because it is a sequel, but in the first one we basically follow Inkwell and he is a thief and a pickpocket and he is hired to go to investigate the death to see if somebody is actually a colonist. We don't know what a colonist is. You'll find out if you read the book but while he is investigating he finds this pocket watch and things go from there. Things start happening to him and he is whisked away and kidnapped and it goes from there. I can't tell you much more but there's a lot of politics in this world, a lot of great character work and definitely a found family. And this book left on a cliffhanger and I'm gonna have to read the next one ASAP. Coming in at number two is The Gutter Prayer by Gareth Hanrahan. I don't know if I said his name right, but this one also took me by surprise because at first when I started reading it, I was kind of so-so trying to get my feel of the world and the politics and all of that. And I was so-so, but as we got into more of the found family and just the, the greatness of the story, I really just loved it. And we are basically following these thieves who have gone on a heist. We have three of them and they the heist goes haywire 
things blow up and two of them get captured one of them escapes and the story kind of goes from there we learn that things aren't always as they seem there's a lot of war warring going on a lot of politics and who's on the right side who's on the wrong side and lots of twists and turns i really 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 enjoyed this series and i hope to continue on with it soon this one got four stars and finally my number one book of the month was a really shocker to me because i really did not feel like this was going to be a winner for me i don't know why because some of her books have been a winner for me in the past but that's going to be funny story by miss emily henry while i was wanting to read funny story i wasn't super excited about it because i didn't think that i would love it as much as i did but i ate the story up five stars love it to death it, it's gonna sit in my heart forever and it's probably gonna be one of those books that I reread. Our main female starts the story engaged. At his bachelor party he cheats on her with one of his childhood best friends and of course they break up and she needs somewhere to go. They were literally going to get married and she finds solace and a roommate in her fiance's childhood best friend's significant other. So they've both been cheated on. She moves in with him and it's their romance and I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And these two characters really endeared me. I teared up a few times in this novel. Could not recommend it more. I think this one is right up there with people we meet on vacation and book lovers, which I personally loved more than the rest, but I I really loved this one. That is all. That is what I read in May. I wasn't really in the great headspace in May to be reading as things were going on at work, but I did enjoy my time doing One Week, One Jar, which is what I did in the month of May. If you liked me doing that, let me know, but um, I definitely will probably do it more in the future. What did you read in May? Have you read any of what I read? Let me know down in the comments below and I'll catch you guys in the next one.